Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss disclosure when it comes to leases specifically from the side of the lessee. In the prior session, we looked at how lease information is presented on the balance sheet, the, the right of use asset, the lease liabilities, how information is presented on the income statement in terms of expenses, and how financial information about the leases is presented on the cash flow statement. In this session, we would look at the disclosure what would the lessee will have to disclose about the figures? So this is the topic that we will be discussing in this session. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. What are disclosures? Disclosures complement. They give you additional information about the balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flow. But didn't we just discuss those? Didn't we just showed you what goes on the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow? Well, this is additional information to shed more light. Sometimes the figures by themselves don't make sense or you need more information about them. So what we do is we have narrative explaining exactly what these how, how did we compute those figures because you need to know what assumptions did we make we, you need to know what type of leases do we have and this is where the disclosures will come into place what is the interest rate we are using and let's see disclosure would involve both qualitative which is descriptive as well as quantitative which is numbers and those quantitative and qualitative information shed more light about the lease obligation and the right of use asset. Starting with qualitative disclosure, and if you really think about it from a logical perspective, if you have a lease, what do you need to know as a user of the financial statement? You're looking at lease information. What do you need to know? Well, you want to know information about the nature of the lease. Give me a description of the leases. Just tell me what's in there. Is there any specific terms, any restriction that the lease is imposing on the lessee? Any covenants like that covenant that, that might impact the lessee use of the leased asset or financial obligation. If there's any variable payment component, well, explain to me how it was computed, calculated. Is it ch the change about the variable payment? Is it based on an index usage or some sort of, of a performance matrix? Is there any option to terminate or extend the lease? If the lease has the option to extend, it means you have the right to do what? It's a five-year lease, but you have the right to extend it to eight. Let me know. How about the right to terminate the lease early? If there's any penalties, no penalties, how much? You must disclose all this information. Any residual guaranteed value. If you are guaranteeing any residual value of the lease at the end of the lease, you want to show this information. You must disclose this information. Also, if you have leases in progress or leases that have not been signed in yet or they have not commenced for that matter well you need to know we need to know about them why because those will impose future obligation and information on the financial statement should help the users do what predict future information therefore future leases are important any significant assumptions or judgment made in computing the lease how did we come up with the asset how did we come up with this liability on the balance sheet how about if we have lease and non-lease component how did, we de how did we determine the discount rate? Any, ex any assumptions and judgment we made in this process, just spell it out for us. Let us know how you came, up, came with it. If there is a sale leaseback arrangement, the good thing about the CPA exam, they no longer test you about sale leaseback arrangement, at least under the FAR section. If the lessee has sold the asset, then leased it back. It's called sale leaseback agreement. So it's a form of financing. If that's the lease, well, let us know the terms and condition. Again, for the CPA exam, you don't have to worry about this. It was a pain for most students to learn about this topic. I loved it, but students did not like it. Any accounting policies. Lessee should disclose their accounting policies for lessee, including their treatment. How do they treat short-term leases? Let's move to the quantitative disclosure. Those disclosures are numerical in nature. 
first we would like to take a look at the finance lease cost. We remember we have finance lease and operating lease. Remember the finance lease, and we talked about this when we looked at the various financial statement, the payments, the cost is broken down into the amortization of the right of use asset and the interest on the lease liability. Show us that, show us that in details. The total cost of the operating lease. Remember for the lease, for the operating lease, we only have one expense. Show us that total cost. But the finance lease show us the two component. Short term lease cost, you know, the cost associated with any short term lease, which is 12 months or less. Here you want to give more figures about the variable lease cost. Remember on the quantitative, how you came up with it. Was it based on here? You give more numbers. How did you come up with the number? Show us the number itself based on things outlined in the lease agreement. Show us the cash payment here, separated into operating and financing. Remember, if it's an operating lease, the cash flow statement is goes under operating. If it's a finance lease, remember, re reducing your reducing your liability is a financing transaction. Amortization is an operating cost. You, you show this in here as well. If there is non-cash information, supplemental information on the lease liabilities obtaining from obtaining the asset which involved non-cash transaction. If you did an exchange rather than paying cash, you gave an old truck as part of the deal. Show us this information. Also, we want to see the weighted average term, disclosure of the weighted average remaining lease term. How long do you still have? You might have many leases. You can have weighed them all together. And the weighted average discount rate in measuring the lease liability because you, you're going to have several liabilities, several lease obligation liabilities. Well, tell us what's the overall discount rate for all of them, the average. And also what's important, just like when you have a notes payable, is to show a breakdown of lease liabilities that are due, separated into operating and financing, and typically provided for the next five years. Simply put, you want to show the operating liability, the finance liability separately for leases, and show us the payments for the next five years. And this is important because you have to show this also for notes payable, because at the end of the day, the lease liability is a long-term liability. And what's important from a user's perspective is to show us here, one, two, three, four, five, what is your cash outflow in the next five years when you have a long-term liability? Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A company finance lease liability maturing analysis for the next five years is as follow. Year one, 10,000. Year two, 9,000. Year three, 8,000. Year four, 7,000. Year five, 5,000. What is the total finance lease liability disclosed for the five-year period? Simply put, if you have those five payments for the next five years, how much you will disclose on the notes of the financial statement, statements related to this finance lease? Here's what you need to know about whether it's leases or notes payable or bonds, any long-term debt. You have to show the five-year outflow of cash. What does that mean? It means on the, in the disclosure, I have to show what's the pressure on my cash flow. What is the cash flow requirement in the next five years? Add them up. Year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. If the math is right, the answer should be C, 40,000. So you have to show your total lease liability over the next five years, just like you have to do this for notes payable, just like you have to do this for bonds or any other long-term debt for that matter. Again, the purpose of this is to tell the users, here's my cash obligation for the next five years, because what matters to investors and creditors, your cash outflow and inflow, give me the picture. And the five years should give me a good idea where I stand. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, additional resources that's going to help you, whether you're studying for your CPA exam, accounting certification, or any other accounting courses. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, Stay safe.